superstar in our sport. We call him Todd Zilla. What's up, Todd? How you doing today? Hey, howdy. I'm doing well. So uh, we haven't seen much of you lately. I know uh, we heard there was some sort of accident or something like that. So I just wanted to kind of find out what actually happened to you and all. Uh, let's see. The day before I was supposed to fly to Australia, I was riding an ATV and flipped her over backwards. And it landed on my hand and landed on my stomach. And then we like wrestled and fought ourselves all the way to the bottom of the hill. And uh Ended up spending a couple of days in the hospital, actually. <laughs> Damn, that's not fun, man. Any any serious damage or anything nope, like that? my hand's mostly back. Most of the swelling's gone down in the hand, and the stomach area is, is getting better. Well, that's good to hear, brother. Glad that uh, nothing broke or anything like that, but, I mean, uh, I'm sure you're built like uh, titanium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing broke. They scanned me and x-rayed me and... Uh, what do they do? Ultrasounded me and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so so uh, do you think it's because uh, you were set to pull Ryan Bowen? Because I'm hearing that he's got some sort of curse on any of his opponents that he's going against. It seems to be all kinds of crazy stuff happening to everybody. Oh, I don't know. I've seen the delusional Ryan Bowen videos. I haven't seen the demonic ones. Maybe he's, <laughs> maybe he's possessed or something. He's like a witch. There you go. He might have a Toddzilla doll over there and he's sticking... <laughs> uh, Needles in there or something like that. Yeah. So I uh, wanted to know, brother, uh, a lot of people just want to know the basics about you and everything. Um, had a lot of questions asking what you do for a living, and you could let us know about that. And uh, another question everybody says is, uh, want to know how do you, you are seem to be really into the numbers of uh, your training and everything. Where does that come from? Well, I'm an engineer. And I'm currently the quality manager at Thermal Fisher. We build medical equipment. And the numbers in my training stuff are all, you know, it all, all comes from West Side Barbell. Because the West Side Barbell system is all about uh, recording your strength and making sure you're getting stronger. So you don't know that if you're not keeping track of your max efforts. So, you know, I write down what my max efforts are because I rotate them over so many exercises that I won't repeat them for months at a time. So, you know, I can't, so I can't remember what like my max side pressure is with a certain handle for two or three months. So I write everything down and I write down the volume and the speed day stuff as well. In case my max effort numbers aren't going up, I can go back and see if I saw a trend somewhere else or, you know, it just helps me dissect what my uh, training is and how to adjust it because I I change it constantly. The basic strategy stays the same, but the tactics vary almost continuously. I got to say, brother, out of everybody in their training, you are definitely the most precise with the numbers. And uh, I'm starting to think now that I hear that you're an engineer, maybe there's uh, something with that that is uh, carrying over into arm wrestling. Well, the more people who listen to me, the more people will get precise. So soon everybody will be training like this. <laughs> so. I agree. Uh, I had uh, Todd still over at my house and we did a seminar and uh, he was kind of teaching everybody and kind of showing his system. And uh, I got to say, I took a lot from that, that, that day it was an amazing seminar. One of the most informative that I've ever seen in arm wrestling. And uh, if anybody ever gets a chance to, get to attend one of his seminars, definitely worth it. Definitely well, a lot of info to pick up on. So I wanted to know uh, what's up next for you, brother, because I know you've been uh, healing up and uh, kind of taking your time off, recovering your whole body because you went on this, I guess, like a year run of just almost every month you're pulling a ma major mega match and all. So what's next coming up? The next definite match I have isn't until August, and that's in Toronto at uh, Magna's event. I'm pulling John Brzezink. And there's a couple of people who've reached out uh, with super matches and stuff in between now and then, but nothing's confirmed. Um, the accident caused me to, you know, cancel it, um, a match I had. I was supposed to go to East First West. And of course I was in no shape to do that, so. What uh, match were you supposed to have in East First West? I know, but I don't know if 
Engen posted it. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to, I mean, I know who it was, but I don't, if Engen didn't post it, I don't know if he wants me saying because he could have, he could have said it. So I don't know if he, I don't know if he posted it or if he canceled it. So I'm not going to say. <laughs> that, that's understandable. I don't, I don't need you getting blocked or something like that. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you about the John Brzezink match. That is, uh, that is amazing match to have. And uh, we all been waiting for this one. Uh, we also know that you used to train with John back in the day. Is this true? Yeah, like for about three years. Wow. So uh, what do you expect, man? Uh, you know, going against the goat of our sport. Uh, well, you know, I'm watching his matches like everybody else does. And he seems to be pulling his, his hand still looks formidable. His hand still looks, you know, as good as it ever did. But I'm also seeing a lot of John pulling when he doesn't have all his hand too. So that's like a scary new dimension in his arsenal. <laughs> so, uh, I'm expecting him to like completely dominate the hand. Um, I think we'll be about equal on speed and overall power. It, it's John's a hard one to judge that way because he's so he's so technical, he's so efficient. He uh, it's it's easy to underestimate just how strong he really is. So, um, but I mean, I I'll have my power numbers up by then. So, no, well, I expect it to be tough. <laughs> I expect it to be really really hard. What did uh, did you get to see the Dennis Plankoff match against John recently? I have not seen that, but I wouldn't pull him like Dennis did, anyways. But I I did go. I, I mean, I know John lost because I saw headlines and stuff, but I haven't watched the match. Wow, I would have thought you would be studying that already with you and your precision and all. Yeah, I think I was in Florida when that happened. I think I was on vacation when that match happened. No, 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 no. I was hurt because that happened when I was supposed to be in Australia. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I think I was in the hospital when that happened. <laughs> wow. All right, so we'll we'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> What's uh, going on with training now? Um, have you been putting out any videos? Are you planning on putting out your training videos leading up to this match? I just start. I had been training because I went to Montana recently. Then I got hurt. So I was training up until I got hurt. Then I was off. So I just started back again this week. And of course, when you're, when you're off for a while, of course I was hurt. So I'm, I'm getting sore all the time, but I should be back to training full speed next week. Um, yeah, I'll probably do a, a couple more training videos. I got an update to the, which side of the table has a bias to it. And if the buckle matters, that sort of thing, I've updated that because I've been tracking all the East first West matches. So I vlogged every match in East first West one through six. And I went and analyzed just John and Prudnik's matches. So when this video drops out, you'll see how they do when they're, when they're on the buckle side or the non-buckle side. So I think that'll be interesting to see, you know, if the buckle's so important, how does it affect an individual arm wrestler as opposed to the entire population? So. Wow, that's going to be an interesting one. I can't wait for you to drop that one. And uh, to my subscribers, if you haven't already, Get over to Todd Zilla's YouTube channel. I mean, he puts out all his training videos. This is a man you want to watch. If you're new into the sport, this is uh, he teaches just amazing um, ways to get stronger. Like I said before, he's really um, crazy with the numbers. He uh, tracks everything he does. Um, you want to give a brief uh, rundown of, of the schedule, like how you do? I know you got a strength day. You got a speed day. You want to just go over that real quick? Yep. Monday mornings is always speed day for your arm. Wednesday mornings is always max effort day. And Friday mornings is always volume day. Saturday is usually volume on JM presses. Sundays would be like squats. And then the evenings are usually handful, you know, any weak spots you got to pick up. For me, it's usually hands and um, like isometrics. So there's a couple of, there's my, like I said, the basic strategy hasn't changed. And I think I've got three or four specific routines posted on the channel, but. Okay, and and the, the basics is uh, the West side barbell system. Is that. Yep. If you're familiar with the West side barbell system and Louis Simmons, you will be very familiar with how I train. 
because I just lifted it all from their site. <laughs> so. And then uh, the other thing that I really liked that I took from his seminar was uh, these JM presses that he does. And uh, he swears by it for uh, recovering your elbows after your training, uh, table training and all. And uh, I've been incorporating it into my stuff and I could just see my elbows again stronger. When you first do them, you feel like the weakest person there is because it's really awkward feeling and it doesn't feel comfortable. But then as you keep progressing, you get real strong, real quick with them and uh, your mobility, everything starts getting better with them. Yeah, everybody should be doing JM presses. That's that's the quickest way to get through that elbow pain of the beginners. And it's the quickest way to push your numbers up on side pressure or any of your elbow based movements. Because I haven't found anything that actually hits the tendons as thoroughly as that do. Plyometrics will get your tendons some, but you know, it's more of a plyometrics are more an abrupt shock to it, where the JM presses, you get a big stretch, a big contraction. And it works like both sides of the elbow. So it's, yeah, they're, they're very effective. Everybody, every, nobody should be complaining about elbow pain anymore. Everybody, you know, that's the cure to elbow pain. And the thing that I noticed with them is uh, when I'm, when I'm pulling, when I first started, uh, when I'd go inside, I got these big ass forearms, but it felt like it would, they were ready to explode. I get this like kind of pain and I just didn't know what it was and I could never really use my forearm. Well, I've been doing these JM presses for the last few months and everything. And just so you know, brother, I, I stopped completely training bodybuilding. I stopped, I think it was like eight months ago and I've been just everything I do is for arm wrestling now. And uh, what I was about to say with those JM presses, now my forearm does not feel like it's going to explode and when people just go hit into it, it's like hitting a wall now. And they, they all say something. They're all like, wow, your elbow integrity has definitely changed. And, you know, I could feel it. So if you guys aren't doing JM presses already, make sure that's part of your routine. And uh, how many times a week do you hit JM presses? I'm doing them twice. I do uh, at least nine sets of 10 on Saturday over three grips. And then I'll do a really, really heavy day in the week now. I think that's, oh, I think it's tonight. I think it's Wednesday evenings. I have to look. Like I said, I move my program around a little bit every now, but I do a heavy JM press day. But I do Saturday mornings is like a huge, because I practice Friday nights. So Saturday mornings is a huge JM press day. Just trying to get up to, you know, uh, there I'm just calculating the volume. I don't have my workbook in front of me, but it's like, so it's like 90 reps at like 200 pounds. So, oh, I can do the math. So whatever 90 wow. times 200 is, I always get the 90 times 200. So it's uh 18, the volume's 18,000. I'm trying to push that 18,000 number up weekly until it stops. And then I'll, then I'll switch around and start pushing the volume number up again. Wow. Uh, that, that's Louis impressive. Simmons has a volume number for squatting that, he says, if you squat like 500 pounds, this is the volume you do on the reverse hyper machine. And if you squat 800 pounds, this is it. So he has a chart and uh, we don't have anything like that in arm wrestling. And Ryan Espy had me on a podcast once and we were talking about what would be the uh, arm wrestling equipment of the reverse hyper. And I was at first, I thought it'd be like a reverse curl or something like that. Now I'm kind of thinking it might be the JM press, you know, for an inside puller. If you're a top roller, it still might be a reverse curl. But for a sideways puller like me, I think it's, it would be like the JM press. So I'm trying to figure out what level of volume you need at each level of side pressure. Now, but, what uh, you said you're hitting legs and everything and to an arm wrestler, it's almost against religion. But uh, I wanted to ask you, do you really uh, think that legs is, does it help you on the table at all or as an arm wrestler or it's just more of a day where you're not lifting on your arms, you know, but you still hit the gym? Now, I've read this a lot, but I'll be honest, I've read it mostly in bodybuilding magazines where they say if you started your workouts out with squatting or deadlifting, it hits such the big muscle groups it like triggers your central nervous system to start building muscles, whatever signals it said sends to build muscles. So if you squatted heavy and then trained arms, it would benefit your arm training. I don't know about that because we hit so much volume on our arms anyways. I'm not worried about getting big there, but I haven't 
found anything to simulate. You can't simulate a competition match in practice because nobody cares a much cares that much about it. So they'll give up long before they get hurt. But when you're in a big match and you absolutely positively cannot give up, I don't know how, how to simulate that, that mental toll or that concentration you need other than max deadlifting and max squatting. I mean, that's just putting yourself at red line and my squat numbers and my deadlift numbers are terrible. I got Facebook feeds with women you know, lifting way more weight than I do. <laughs> you, know, I, I gave, you know, I gave up that a long time ago, but I do know when you're tied up in an ugly position and you're absolutely positively trying not to give up, a max deadlift gives you that feeling. <laughs> you know? So to me, it's mostly, you know, it's just building like toughness or that country boy power that those guys have or that stuff that old men get. I don't know, but it's, to me, deadlifting and heavy, heavy squatting are like almost perfect exercises. So when I train people on the side, not just, you know, if they're not, if they don't want to train specifically for arm wrestling, but usually it's like weight loss or to get fit. Um, there's always a, you know, there's always a, at least a, one squat day and one deadlift day in the week or two squats or something like that. But there's always heavy, heavy muscle lifting, you know especially for women. I think women need to train heavier than they do. I think too many women grab the little tiny dumbbells and then just, you know, and it, the volume they do is just crazy. I mean, it's like five sets of 20 or, you know, five sets of 30. And it's like, e gads, man, let's, let's, let's deadlift. Let's deadlift like six times, you know, <laughs> and that'll usually work them harder than like three days of training, did, you know, with their uh, fit for life, you know crossfit program yeah i gotta tell you i do uh two days of legs and uh the only reason why i do that you know me i'm I'm obsessed with training and all and uh otherwise i'm gonna be hitting seven days on my arms and my upper body and uh you know so i use it usually right after i do table day you know uh, i'll hit legs or whatever and then you know just hit band work on that day on my arms but it's more of me just being able to go to the gym and uh work out and give my upper body uh uh, rest so that's yeah. why i incorporate the legs into the whole routine and all